Creations. It is episode 205. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back each week. If you're a new viewer, thank you for stopping by and please click the little red subscribe button down below. And if you click the little notifications bell and then click all, it should hopefully notify you whenever I post a video, which is always on Saturday and usually on Wednesday. So let's get started. I have a finished object. I have, some of you saw this on Facebook and on the holiday along, I finished my crocheted sweater. This is Lion Brand, and it is called Sunday Stripes, and it is a, the homespun, homespun brand. And you can see I have a split collar on it. There it is like that. And this is based on a sweater that I already had. Now, I did have um, Kim ask me, and I think somebody else asked me as well, how did I attach the um, collar? Trial and error, basically. Um, I the collar is knitted the rest of it is all crocheted and it's all single crochet because I didn't want to have to wear a shirt underneath it I wanted something that was thick um, and not not see-through okay and it's definitely thick in fact I put this on and it is so thick that I feel like the little kid on the, the that's wearing the snowsuit in a Christmas story and his hands are stuck his arms are stuck out like this and he can't move I kind of feel that way. I don't think I'm going to need a heavy coat when I wear this sweater. Um, yeah. So anyway, how did I attach the collar? My first attempt, I just went through with knitting needles and picked up the stitches all the way around the collar and then started knitting just like around and then back around, you know, this way so that it stayed split open. So I was knitting from one side around to this side and then turning and going back around again. I finished it and looked at it and realized where my split fell when I put it on looked almost like a Peter Pan collar that was off center. It was like split here instead of split here. So it kind of looked like I had had a mistake instead of what I was going for. So I ripped the whole thing out and this time I just simply knitted a separate um, rectangle and what I did to do that is I figured out I did a small little swatch to see how many stitches I could get per inch and I used a US 9 or no US 10 knitting needle and so I knitted a small swatch to see how many stitches per inch and then I measured the neck all the way around here and then multiplied that number of inches by the number of stitches that I got. So I think it was like 23 or 24 inches and I was getting three stitches to the inch. So I measured it that way and it worked out perfectly. And then once I finished it, I was able to lay it out on the sweater and see exactly where I wanted the split to fall. And then I just sewed it together. So I am really happy with it and I'm going to stick in a modeling clip of me wearing this so you can get a better idea um, but it is very warm and snuggly and I'm very happy with it so um, yes so there it is and here are the two sleeves they're identical and I had redone, redone the sleeves if you remember the other week I ripped them out and did, redid them because it made my bat wings look even more battier than they already were yeah, I don't need them to flap. So these are these are more snug. They hold they contain my bat wings. We'll say <laughs> that's a way of putting it. They they contain my bat wings. So um yes, yeah, so here it is. And I like this type of collar because I have some really pretty brooches or pins that I can put right here. I have some that have pink in them, and I have a button. Uh, that I got from Knit Crate a few years ago, and I inserted a picture of it last week, uh, but it's about this big, and um, it's about the size of like a 50 cent piece, and I have ordered some pin, like pin backs, so I'm going to hot glue the back of the, the little pin thing to the button so that I can wear it on this uh, sweater, and I have another sweater that is pink, so yeah, so there it is. And I will stick in a modeling clip. So here is my sweater. You can see this 
the split collar right here and my sleeves. I don't like bell sleeves so these fit just nice. You know I don't mind a little bit of gap here but I I don't like them like snug up against here but I don't want the like big droopy bell sleeves. So there's my sweater and I'll come up close so you can see it. So yeah it's really warm, it's soft, it's like wearing a blanket and as I said, I feel like the little boy on a Christmas story with his arms stuck out like this because it is it is a thicker sweater, but it'll be nice and cozy in the wintertime. Now, I have to give you an update on my crocheted basket, okay? I have been using this. In fact, it works perfect um, for sweaters because this one's really, really deep. You can see how tall it is. But the dog has decided that when it gets slightly squished down like this, it's perfect to climb inside. I was looking the other day, I looked down and the dog was inside my basket, which means I need to de-hair it because it's got puppy fur all over the place inside there. Um, but yes, she apparently really likes it. And um, it's not as puppy fur as I thought. I don't see puppy fur. How do we not do that? If I wore clothes, she was on my lap earlier and I was like wearing half of her hair, I think. Um, yeah, so anyway, the dog likes it. And I just bought her a new dog bed, which is crazy. Her old dog bed we got when we got her from the pound, the pound, well, I say the pound, it was Humane Society. When we got her, they gave us a dog bed and she has used it, I guess, 11 years now, because I think she's 11 years old. And it was this cute, we always called it her princess bed because it was all puffy and it was pink and it had a little flower on it. Um, I washed it because it had a little odor to it. And when I washed it, it literally fell apart. So we had to get her another little puppy bed instead. And now I'm discovering that she likes my basket and I could have just made her a short rimmed basket and stuck a small pillow inside and called it done. And she would have been perfectly pleased. Apparently she likes crocheted and knitted things because if there's anything crocheted or knitted laying within reach, she lays on it. She just, she likes them. I don't know what it is. So yes, she, she wants to take over my basket, but it, I'm not sharing that with her. I'll make her something different if she wants it. But yeah, anyway, just thought I'd share that because I thought it was kind of cute and funny. So the rest of my projects that I have going on, my works in progress, are all knit related because that was my big crochet relation related project that I worked on this week. I still am working on my crocheted bath rug and my crocheted, um, my next crocheted basket. I just didn't work on them this week because all of my crochet was spent on, on the sweater. So let me show you what I've got going on with my knitting. I started these socks last week. They're, on, they're all tangled up here. I am doing these two at a time. I started out doing one at a time just until I got to the heel flap and gusset. And once I got past the heel, there we go. Once I got past the heel, I put them on and I'm doing the magic loop. So I'm doing them two at a time. So here you can see the top. I haven't woven in my threads or anything yet. Um, so here's the top. And then here is the heel and so now I am working my way out on the foot so there you can see it a little bit better so yeah so I got two of those going and two balls of yarn and I'm hoping this is enough because this is the only skein of the shard I've got so the toes might end up contrasting I'm not sure we'll see how far but I'm, I'm hoping I can finish the socks with these so that is knit project number one. Knit project number two is, is a hat. I'm back, back to doing my hats again. So this one is on, it's, it's my pinwheel beanie hat, but I'm doing a different ribbing on it. I'm doing a three by one which is kind of neat because once it gets into the body of the hat, it doesn't even really show all that much, but it still gives you that elasticity that you get with ribbing. And 
um, in the acquisitions, I'll tell you a little bit more about this, but I am using US 7s, and these are, this is 12 millimeter Chai Gu needles. This works so much better because the 16 inch ones, which is what I had before, once you get in the body of the hat, it's not a big deal. But when you first start using this, it's really tight. I mean, you got to really slide your stitches around. This thing is like a dream. It just, you just keep going around and around. You don't have to kind of fiddle with it at all. More about that in the acquisitions. But uh, so that is my, my other knitted project. I had a meeting this week, so that's what I was doing during my meeting. And then my last work in progress is the cowl pattern that I am working on through the second time. Um, as far as, you know, making sure the pattern looks right and everything. And so that one this week, I have done this entire section and started back into the second section that looks like this. And the little slant thingies are not showing up as well with this color. You can see some texture. But they really showed up in my other cowl that I made because they were bright yellow. Uh, but I still, I like this. I just don't think it shows up as much. It hasn't been blocked, so it's curling a little bit. But there it is. So I have one more section of this that I'm working on now and then the final section of this and then this will be the second of the pattern that will be completed and then I'll be able to write it up and check it for typos and then it'll be up for sale over on Lovecrafts eventually. That's the goal at least. So those are the projects that I'm working on this week. What have you guys been working on? Now, show and tell might be a little skimpy over the next couple months because we have the holiday along running. Now, if you're not familiar with what the holiday along is, it is a collaboration between myself and Sarah Oliver. I will put a link to her channel down below. And from October 1st until December 31st, you can submit onto our Facebook page, which is Holiday Along 2020. Um, or you can email me at katrinascreations at yahoo.com and you can enter anything you make. It does not have to be holiday related. 
as long as it is finished between October 1st and December 31st. So at the end of the holiday along, uh, both Sarah and I will draw prizes. She's already announced over on her channel uh, what the prizes are going to be for her. And mine are to, yet to be announced because I have to look through and decide this, I need to come up with what I'm going. I have some ideas, but I haven't come up with definitely what I'm going to be giving away as the prize. Um, so anyway, it's going to run for those three months. You can enter anything that you make that is knitted or crocheted. Um, please tell us when you send in your submission, uh, whether it's knitted or crocheted, uh, what kind of yarn you used, how much yarn you used, or at least a close guess. And uh, what the pattern is. That way, when all of us see these pictures, see pictures of these projects, if we see something we want to make, which I saw one the other day that I really, really like, um, yeah, that way the rest of us can ooh and ah over it and then go over and get the pattern for ourselves. Or if we see a particular yarn that one of you has used that we really like, we can see what it is. So, um, yeah, if you have information, please put all the information you can into your entry. And to make it a little bit fun, uh, we are running Team Knit against Team Crochet, and we are transferring the yardage into mileage to see how far we can get. Now, Sarah lives just outside Glasgow, Scotland. I live outside Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and we are loosely following the route from around the world in 80 days. Now, this part of the, the holiday along is just for fun. It's just to see how far can we go. And um, like I said, you can check over on Sarah's channel to see the map of how far we've gotten in a week. Uh, but roughly um, at the time she filmed her podcast, Team Crochet had traveled from Scotland to London to Paris and was on their way to Germany. And Team Knit had traveled from Glasgow to London and was almost to Paris. So um, I do believe we have more crocheters than knitters on the channel, um, and you can enter for both. So it's, like I said, this part of it's just for fun. So, you know, it doesn't have to be definite yardage, just an approximation, and you can participate on both sides. I'm participating on both sides, um, but I won't be getting any prizes, but I'm just entering my yardage to see how far we can go. So that is the holiday along. Like I said, if you want to see the actual map of how far we've gotten, check out Sarah's channel. And the link, again, is down below. So you can go over and check hers out. At the end of each month, either she or I, one of us each month, is going to show an accumulation of all of the projects for that month. However, I need to talk to Sarah because we had so many entries just last week we might want to do this on a weekly basis and show pictures because last week okay we started october 1st today is october 9th i'm filming on friday for saturday's podcast which is when you're watching this we have 71 or 72 entries at this time just from one week so if we wait till the end of the month it might be a humongous number of things to watch so, um, yeah, so that might pop up as, as a video at some point from one, uh, from one of us. We will put a video up maybe in a week instead of waiting till the end of the month because of the number of entries, which is exciting because I think the total last year we had a little over 400 entries. We're close to a quarter of the way through that, and we're only one week into it. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be fun. We've got a lot more people participating which is great, and we might get further. Last year, I think the furthest crochet, team crochet won last year, and I think they got to San Francisco. So who knows? This this year, we might make it across the U.S. to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, because I'm on the East Coast. I'm kind of between, um, if you're not familiar with the U.S., I am between um, Baltimore and New York, closer to Baltimore. Um, but that's that's the general area where I live. So that is the news on the holiday along. Now it's time for acquisitions. First thing, my Lion Brand order came in really quick. Uh, they had a sale on, I think it was 40 or 50% off of just my stripe a couple weeks ago. And they filled the order faster than I expected. 
So here's what I bought. I bought two skeins of each of these colors. They are going to be slipper socks or just socks. They're, this is a worsted, I think this is worsted weight. Let me see, is this worsted weight? Yes, it's a number four worsted weight. Um, there is, let's see, this color, and they're both the same. They're just wound slightly different, so they look like they're different colors, but they're both the same. This color, Barbie, or no, it's cotton. I'm reading, I'm re trying to read the French version of it. It says Barbe et Papa, cotton candy. That's what it really is. It's cotton candy. So there it is. It looks like something Barbie would wear. I think that's why I had Barbie on the mind because it, it looks like it looks like something Barbie would wear. Um, so anyway, two pink cotton candy and two of these, which is berry blue. It's a teal. It's a turquoisey teal. And I did not tell you the yardage. There's 177 yards per skein. So I am hoping to get some socks knitted and crocheted out of this, like socks or like slipper socks, that type of thing. Um, I wear them all year round, even in the winter time, or in, well, of course in the winter time, even in the summertime because my feet are always cold. And so some of the socks I've knitted or crocheted, not the crocheted ones, they've held up pretty good, but the knitted ones, some of them have gotten holes in them, so I need to replace them. So I'm going to be working on that. So when I saw yarn cheap, and I spend, I get cheap yarn for my feet. You know, I'm not wearing fancy stuff that's 20 some dollars a skein on my foot. So um, it's going to get smelly and it's going to get dirty because I, I'd like to say my floors are like, you know, that clean, but they're really, they're, they're clean, but they're not that clean. So no matter what I do, they end up getting dirty and a little smelly too, but we won't talk about that. So, um, yeah, I need to make more socks. The other thing I got, and this I did not buy, this was from a viewer and I'm not going to say who, but a special thank you. And she knows who she is and she and I have been talking when I showed you this hat with the 12 inch needles, those were from this viewer. And she sent me not just one set, not just two sets, but she sent me three sets of needles. She sent me, um, they're all 12 inches. She sent me a US six, a seven and an eight. Um, so I started with this hat using the 12 inch size sixes and these are sevens that I'm knitting with now and it's funny what prompted all this was she and I were talking and um we were talking about how awkward it is to start a hat with the smallest needles we had were 16 inch circulars and how right at the brim you know right at this area here how tight it is when you first get started once like you said once you get into the here it's it's more stretchy but not so much when you first get started and we were like I wish they made 12 inch needles those would be like the perfect size and apparently they do make 12 inch needles so these are um I got this this um mail in in from Amazon and I was looking at Dave and I was like I didn't order anything I don't know what this is and then I opened it up and saw the note inside. So um, thank you. You know who you are. So uh, these are the Chai Gu Premium Stainless Steel Needles. And they have like a red cable that they hook the needles with. Which is really nice because the, the cable, I think they call them laces. Uh, they are very, very flexible. So actually, let me take the needle out and I'll show it to you. So here is here is the needles. The tips here are, if you counted from right here where the cable joins to here, they are probably maybe two and a half, maybe three inches, but the actual working area here is about two inches, so that that enables them to go really close. If you had a longer longer needle itself or tip as they call them, 
it would be you'd only be able to work like this so that's why the tips on the shorter uh, needles are small so it makes it much much easier to hold and then the cable here is very flexible it does not have a memory in it and when I say a memory some of your cheaper cords will want to try to keep coiling up I have some that are like that that try to coil the whole time and it's really hard to work when they're wanting to you know kind of go like a spring and going boing all the time these don't do that um so yes these are the chai gu and I will put a link below if you're interested in them um, she got these from Amazon, so I will put a link to the ones on Amazon down below in in the description box if you want to give them a give them a check out. Uh, they do make them in other lengths, and they make um, yeah, I think they make interchangeables too. I'm not sure. I have several chai gu needles. Um, they're nice, and these are the stainless steel tips. They also sell wood ones if you like wood. Um, so yeah, I'll put a link to chai gu needles down below. So there's one more acquisition that I forgot to show you guys. Well, I actually, I guess it's technically two. And um, Dave and I went up to Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Although if you say Lancaster, the locals will look at you and go, where? You have to say it, Lancaster. I have no idea why. But if you say Lancaster, they, they know you're not a local. But that area has Flying Fibers, which is a yarn shop I really like because they carry a lot of yarns that are hard to get other places. They carry Quince & Co., they carry Brooklyn Tweed, uh, they carry Hedgehog Fibers, uh, they carry uh, West Yorkshire Spinners, they carry some European brands that um, aren't always easy to get here. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's a nice shop. Plus they have their own flock of sheep um, and they do some of their own dyeing and spinning as well so this is what I bought this is flying fibers now I do believe if I remember they did the dyeing but it's not from their flock the fiber content is from the UK it's Wensleydale that's the type of yarn it is and it is soft and it does have a halo meaning it's got a fuzzy I don't know how well it's going to show up, but it has a little fuzziness to it. And it's 170 yards. It is a DK weight. And so I bought this. This is not from their sheep. This is from another, um, from some Wensleydale they, that they imported, uh, not the sheep, they imported the wool. Um, from the UK and then I do believe they, they did the dyeing and then they had this little mini that goes with it very nicely and it is also it is also the UK Wensleydale so it's the same company um, this is 58 yards and it was only 580 so you're you're paying like 10 cents per yard for it um, and it has kind of a it has purple and then it's got this kind of a light mauvey color in it that I think is going to look really nice together like that. No idea what I'm going to make with it. Um, it's not a huge amount of yarn. All total it's just a little over 200 yards but um, yeah I think it's pretty. So I bought it. That was that was my big my big purchase of the day. We just went up there to it's a pretty drive and just to kind of spend the day and go out to dinner and it was one of my last days of vacation so that's kind of what we did. So that is it for acquisitions. Now it's time for Now our come and get it section is going to be relatively short pretty much because Lion Brand has been doing lots of sales, but they're like, I don't know about the sale until the day it happens. So I just post the videos as they come and they've had some really good ones this week. Uh, there was one that I think was a 50% off of, I forget which type of yarn, but that was, that was this week. And then they had 25% off nearly every blue yarn that they have in the, it said select yarns, 
But when I went in and looked to see which select yarns it was, it was like, I think, six pages of different blue yarns. So it's pretty much every brand that they carry, and it was 25% off. So, um, yeah, they were doing that because on the day I'm filming this, which is Friday on the 9th, is National Hat for Hate Day, um, where you make blue hats and you donate them for anti-bullying campaign. Uh, so that's what the that's what the hat I'm making uh, is for, but it's not blue because the we are actually Kim Brame and I are donating these to a um, local elementary school. We're not going through the the actual campaign place. We're just going to give them to one of the local schools, um, and they can hand them out as they see fit. And the person she can't she contacted there said, "Don't worry about them being just blue. We will take any color we can get." Um, so, you know, whether they're using it for the anti-bullying thing or whether they're just using it for kids that are needy and need a hat, that's, you know, whatever. We're fine as long as they're getting used and going to somebody who needs one. So, um, anyway, why did I say all that? Oh, yes, because we were talking about Lion Brand. Okay, so Lion Brand, I just let you know throughout the week when I know something's coming up for sale. Annie's has their fall collection, and it was funny because Kim and I were doing a Zoom back and forth last night after our Bible study, and she was she was talking about the fall collection, too, and I said, yeah, there's a couple really pretty patterns in there. A lot of times when they come out with, like, their spring collection, their fall collection, I'm like, oh, that's pretty, that's fine. This time there's like, oh, there's some that are really pretty. There's a poncho that's really pretty, so I will insert a picture of, like, the like the, the site opening, what, is you, what you see, there's like three patterns that pop up. Um, I like the poncho pattern that's there. I think it's really pretty, but the other two are really pretty too. And yeah, they have some nice, they have some nice fall collection patterns and they are all crocheted. So I'm going to insert that for you. Now, Leisure Arts, I picked out a couple of wrap patterns. Um, in my free patterns that I've designed down below, uh, there is a crow fade wrap, which I made, uh, I guess it's been about a year ago. Has it been that long ago? But I, I think it has. It's been close to a year ago. Um, anyway, on the holiday along, one of the entries was by Mary Wanamaker, and it's called the Adirondack Wrap. And I'm going to stick a picture in so you can see it. Anyway, I thought that that was really, really pretty, and a lot of the rest of us did too. I mean, there's lots of pretty stuff over in, in the holiday along, but that one just really caught my attention. And so I looked into it. It is a free pattern. Um, but then I started looking around to see other wraps that are out there. And so Leisure Arts has a book called Wraps Made Easy, and it's a crochet book. So it includes eight patterns. And they have a book called Wraps and Ponchos to Knit, which, of course, is knitted patterns. And there are five different patterns in that book. So if you want to check those out, that's Leisure Arts. Knit Picks. They are having, um, it's not so much a sale, but they are having all of their Bravo brand yarns are being sold right now for $2.49. And Bravo comes in a bulky, a sport, and a worsted weight. Um, it is a premium acrylic, 100% premium acrylic. Uh, so that is the Bravo yarn over at um, Knit Picks. And then Knit Crate, which I should be hopefully getting in in the next couple of weeks. Um, I get that once a month. It's a subscription box. It's normally $24.99, and you get two skeins of luxury yarn, and you get a little magazine with four patterns in it, two knit patterns and two crochet patterns in it. Um, but if you want to give it a try, you can get 50% off your very first box. So you can get your first box for $12.50 if you're interested. So um, that link also, all the links to the sales and everything are down below. So that is it for this week. Uh, Wednesday's video is 
yet to be announced. I have to talk with uh, Sarah and see what we want to do as far as the holiday along. Um, yeah, so so we'll we'll just all be surprised on Wednesday to see what it is. Um, yeah, because I'm not really sure. <laughs> Isn't that awful? I didn't. I planned all my notes out and didn't plan on what my Wednesday video is going to be. So it's up for grabs. We'll all be surprised. How's that? Anyway, um, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you have enjoyed this. And I will see you again Wednesday or whenever there's another Lion Brand sale. Which is really affecting my pocketbook. Because I keep buying yarn. So, bye everybody.